the Thoughty or Tea podcast. Now, being able to bridge that gap between eating disorders and, and autism, a gap that I'm learning is so, so important and such yeah. a strong link that's so common. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do any other work in the world because it lights me up more than anything helping, helping others find their own freedom. What aspects of autism, like or autistic traits, could impact the development of like an eating disorder? What are like the, the crossovers that that really stand out to you? Yeah. So the first one that comes to mind for me is interoceptive awareness and i mean i'm sure you've talked about interoception on the podcast before um but in short I don't th- in- you know what i i i don't know if i have <laughs> I, I i don't think i've even made a podcast about alexa fine yet. i really need to like oh really do something related on that maybe maybe i have maybe it's, but yeah, there's so been the, a few episodes. Because <laughs> I'm sure you've mentioned it like a, a couple I, times. I probably mentioned it. It probably wasn't like one of the topics or right. anything. But. but anyways, yeah, for, for the listeners that maybe don't know, interoception in short is the sense to which we monitor the inner state of our body. So whether we know um, whether we're hungry or thirsty or too hot or too cold or um, whether we need to go to the bathroom or not, like that's all regulated by our interoceptive awareness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But autistic individuals, as well as those with eating disorders, often str- often tend to lack interoceptive awareness. So yeah. we may not be able to recognize a physical hunger as easily, or we also may be unable to recognize when we're full or when we're satisfied, um, which can, of course, make eating and, and nourishing yourself really, really difficult. So, Definitely, like, like, even with stuff like hydration and going, like... yeah. Going, going to the bathroom, you know, like there's been many times looking back in my life where I've just got into this, this crazy, like hyper fixation rabbit hole of just like working from morning to like early hours in the morning. And I just, I start working and I'm like, oh my God, my stomach is like <laughs> absolutely churning and like making all these noises. And right. I haven't been to the bathroom much today either. And I've been drinking like loads and loads of water. <laughs> I'm just like... <laughs> How did I not realize? Right. Yeah. Well, well, I think that for me, for an example, like during during eating disorder treatment, I was like, I'm never hungry. Like I did not feel physical hunger. And they they they'd accuse me of lying. Right. They'd be like, that's your eating disorder talking. But I'm like psycho mm -hmm." psychosomatic. um, Right. And I'm like, and I'm like, that is so harmful. Now that I think, like, you were telling me I was lying to a little fifteen-year-old girl yeah. that was just telling the truth. <laughs> like, I mean, it's just so so awful. So the yeah, space that's like that is medical gaslighting. Like, totally, totally. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a big one is that lack of interoceptive awareness. And um, because, I mean, if you're unable to recognize whether you're hungry or not, like it can ca- it can lead to unconscious restriction. But also on the other end of the spectrum, I think it can also lead to overeating if you don't mm. can't, are unable to recognize when you are satisfied when you're full like you'll just keep eating until you feel like you're going to burst and you're like, oh, <laughs> maybe I ate a bit too much, right? So I think, I've experienced like both sides of that, like when I was younger didn't have like hardly any hunger like I Mm -hmm. I would I mean I would eat enough but I would eat like really like high calorie dense foods Mm -hmm. so I just wouldn't have like a lot of bulk in like what I was eating whereas like nowadays starting this this medication metazapine which I think I've talked to you about before uh, it's like it's it's for anxiety and depression and stuff and it's like a sedative and it helps you sleep Mm-hmm. but the, one of the side effects for a lot of people is that it stimulates your appetite and like as yes. soon as I, I i was on that like my weight just like went straight up i <laughs> i started like binging at night and like the the only real way that i can tell that i'm full when i've had my tablets is if my stomach hurts or like right. i feel sick like mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think for me, like that was a really strong experience that I had when going through extreme hunger. Because when I, when I was coming out of NOD deficit after years of restriction, um, I mean, I always say like I always use New- Newton's third law, which mm-hmm. Newton, I think, by the way, was autistic. Yeah. <laughs> but his his third law states like for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, and I think it's the same for restriction and binging, right? Like if you've spent a long time not eating enough, m- malnourished, then 
like, yeah, you are going to need to eat a lot of food to make up for that and almost compensate for this this buildup of energy debt that's been happening to your body. So for me too, it, it literally felt like even though I didn't feel like a physical hunger, I guess, like it was just this like my my body, there was like this invisible force that was like calling me to eat and eat and eat until I literally couldn't eat a bite anymore because I felt like I was just going to like explode. And I it's was also always- like relieving that mental pressure, isn't it? It's like if you go... yeah. Like, especially when I was competing and stuff, if you go for like days and days and days or weeks and or months or even years of like doing daily intense cardio and like yeah. eating barely nothing, it's like when you when you stop doing that, you're like, oh my God, I can eat what I want. And right. you, it's like you go the opposite way. You're just like... <laughs> right, because your body like has completely lost trust with you. And the only way to gain that trust back with your body is to prove to your body like there was enough food like you're allowed yeah, to rest yeah. and and of course here a, a lot of times what ha- what we see, what I see with clients is that when they come come from a history of restriction usually anorexia or bulimia or orthorexia really any kind of restriction there's this huge fear when they're hit by this wave or like tsunami that sweeps them up of like you need to keep eating they have this huge fear like they're mm-hmm. going to gain weight forever right they're going to become obese 